Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 1979 film Zombie. And when I'm putting this review up, it is available on the Shutter streaming service. This is another Lucio Fulci film, and I've been doing a bunch of Lucio Fulci uh, reviews. Uh, prior to my first one, I hadn't seen any Fulci stuff, but I'd heard a lot about Fulci because people who are into Italian horror talk about Fulci. Mainly Argento, but then Fulci as well. So um, I, I figured, let me just keep going because uh, Shudder's had, I think, a total of five Fulci films on there. So this is my fourth one watching off of Shudder. And I'll probably just go ahead and do the fifth one sometime relatively soon, which is Don't Torture a Duckling, which I'm excited about because I actually on the channel have a playlist for Giallo films, and that is a Giallo film. And I'd like to see what Fulci does with Giallo because I haven't seen him do that yet. But... We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about Zombie, which is also known as Zombie 2 in Italy. And we'll talk about why that is. So Fulci, you might know him from other things such as Don't Torture a Duckling, which I talked about. Uh, the New York Ripper, A Cat in the Brain, The Beyond, um, uh, The House by the Cemetery, City of the Living Dead, which that's the Gates of Hell trilogy. I have all the Gates of Hell trilogy um, available. I have a Lucio Fulci playlist for reviews on this channel, so you can check those out. This one, okay, so I found in two different places that they're saying two different people wrote the script for this one. So, so one place it said Dardano Sacchetti, and another place it said Elisa Brigante. Now, he's worked with both of these people in the, with his films from the Gates of Hell trilogy, so I believe either one. So, Whoever, whichever source you want to believe, it's either Elisa Brigante or Dardano Sacchetti. I don't know. We'll find out. So it was said, though, that Dardano Sacchetti wrote this as a sequel to Dawn of the Dead. I don't know. That's, like I'm saying, it was said. So it was released as Zombie 2 in Italy, and the reason for that is because Dawn of the Dead was actually released as Zombie in Italy when it made it over there. So the fact that Sacchetti apparently wanted it to be a sequel, they called it Zombie 2. Which, I don't I don't get how that happens, just because, like, Romero had nothing to do with it. I don't, I don't know. I guess because it's in another country and they changed the name. I don't know. It, it, it seems like a weird thing to me. It really seems weird. And, like, I see a connection between how you could think that it would be geared to be a, a sequel to Dawn of the Dead, but... I also don't at the same time. And part of the reason is, I don't know. Like, everything that Fulci does is very, very light on story. I think we can all agree with that. People who know Fulci, I think we can agree. Fulci's low on story, heavy on visuals, and kill ideas and scene ideas. Like, he has cool visuals in his mind that he goes into when he makes a film. He, I, I feel like he has, like, a list. He's like... This is this will be a cool scene. This will be a cool scene. This will be a cool scene. This will look cool and gory. This will look cool and gory. This will look cool and gory. And then he makes sure he, he hits those things, but he doesn't really care that much about actual, you know, story to it. Um, that's just kind of how it plays out. But anyway, anyway, Fabio Frizi handled the score for this one. He also handled the score for I think it was The Beyond. I think that's what the what film it was he also did and he does a really good job with with the scores this is a, is a good score in this one i quite enjoyed it uh the locations used for this were new york italy and santa domingo which by the way it has a tropical setting i like that i'll talk more about that later it's very different for a zombie thing especially in 79 i mean even now it's different for a zombie thing to be honest uh it was wildly successful and it actually spawned gory zombie movement within italy it was so successful, everyone was like, hey, much like now with zombie stuff, uh, which is still happening. I don't get it. They were just like, hey, this is a thing. It was cool, and a lot of people liked it. So guess what? We should all cash in on this. Everyone should do it. Eh. Uh, this one was also put on the video nasties list in the UK. Now, <laughs> I feel like Fulci was just permanently put on the video nasties list because this is, once again, the fourth Fulci film I'm reviewing for my channel, and... I think this is a fourth one that was on the video nasties list. So I think they were just at that point, um, just like, I, I mean, this came before the other three films that I reviewed. So I think they did, they saw zombie and they were like video nasties list, put them on there. And then after that, they're just like everything else he comes out with. It's on the list. Just throw it on there. We don't even need to watch it. Uh, so the infamous shark versus zombie scene in this, which is 
unbelievable. I mean, my this was my first time seeing it, and it it is awesome. It is. I've heard that it's cool, and I'm like, for 1979, like, how cool can that be? It's nuts. And it looks like it was very, very dangerous to shoot. It looked risky, but it looked amazing. Not just, like, the action of what was going on, but the actual way the shots were were framed and just the underwater ambiance and look of it was really cool. It was really cool. But anyway, that scene specifically was not approved by Fulci, apparently. Other cast and crew wanted to do that film, and they just went ahead and did it, and Fulci had not signed off on it. So I don't know if after the fact he was just like, oh, okay, now I like it, or or what, but I found that interesting that he didn't sign off on it first. But it paid off, because that's... I mean, if there's anything that people talk about with that film, that is the scene they talk about. So this film's actually been released a lot. Uh, it was released on either VHS, DVD, or Blu-ray in the following years. 1981, 1991, 1994, 2004, 2005, 2012... And I'm sure there will be more releases, because when there's money to be made, films will get re-released. Fulci began directing, directing Zombie 3, but he ended up having to hand that one over to Bruno Mattei and Claudio Fragasso when he ended up actually falling ill. Um, those two then did Zombie 4 as well. So there is a, third, a Zombie 3 and a Zombie 4, which I have not seen Maybe I should add them to the list and get to them at some point, but we'll see about that one. I'm more interested in the Fulci stuff at the moment, so he didn't have any any involvement. Well, except he started Zombie 3, so maybe I need to see at least part of that. Okay, so the actual events of the film. Let's go. The beginning, uh, the beginning of the film with the guy shooting what is assumed to be a zombie that's all wrapped up is a real attention grabber. And I do like how it kind of circles back to that much later in the film and gives the backstory on why he's shooting it. I mean, you would assume up front it's a zombie film, he's a zombie. But the significance of who that is, it, it, it's cool that they circle back to that later and they're like, oh, this was that girl's dad. The the other scientist. I believe it was a scientist, yes. Um, so... I just kind of like that. That is a moment where it's like, oh, they focused on story a little bit here. So I was kind of surprised that they did that, but it was good. But yes, opening up with him just like shooting it. And that's like, there, there's like nothing prior to that. It's just, you see the gun, he's holding the gun from the perspective of looking at the gun. And then he just like shoots it and you see like the viscera kind of come out. And then they cut to like the boat, the abandoned boat. And I was just like, yeah, attention grabber. That's good. You want to do that. Uh, so... When we then go to the boat, the abandoned boat, which obviously isn't fully abandoned because there's a zombie on it, but when we go to the boat and the police are talking about it and they're like, man, we're going to get a bonus if this is an abandoned boat. Is that a thing? Like, as a police officer, do you get a bonus for finding an abandoned boat? I would think that more than anything, you would get a bonus for like, I don't know, finding dead bodies and solving the crime instead, not, hey, I found this abandoned boat. I don't know, maybe is it is it kind of a, like a reference to that, like, then they can take possession of it and, like, auction it off? I don't know. But I just don't think that's a thing, and I think it was a really random bit of dialogue, and I was like, eh? Um, I, then I put down, man, Fulci loves blood spurting out of necks. He loves it, and he loves to do slow motion on that. He did that a bunch in his Gates of Hell trilogy. He did it here a few twice in this film, I believe. Uh, and he also loves creepy crawlies, worms, centipedes, spiders, because he goes for that in this one as well. Um, I mean, this was before the other three that I saw, so he did it here, and then he obviously continues it in his Gates of Hell trilogy. It's just like worms and spiders and centipedes and just keep throwing it in there. It's a thing. I mean, it, it. it's interesting because when you watch certain directors like this who will continually do the same things, much like Dario Argento too, like with the way he does lighting and the way he likes to incorporate animals in his films, um, you, you just start to see these films and be like, ah, this is quintessentially Argento or this is quintessentially Fulci. And like now that I'm watching my, my fourth Fulci film or did watch my fourth Fulci film, I feel like I could watch that and be like, yep, this is very Fulci. It feels Fulci. And I kind of like having that, you know, reference now. You can also compare other people to him as well. Uh, I don't think there's a chance that sneaking onto a crime scene boat to have sex 
as a ruse would actually work. When when the reporter and the daughter of the the missing scientist sneak onto the boat because they want to find out what happened, and then the police officer comes on and they're just like, oh, pretend like we're having sex. First of all, who thinks that's going to work? Second of all, why does the police officer just be like, oh, these people just having sex on a crime scene boat? That's no big deal. Get out of here, you crazy kids. Which they aren't even young. They aren't even like teens or in their 20s or anything. They're like in their 30s, 40s. I don't know. They're much older. And <laughs> it's just so weird and implausible. But that's, you know, Fulci does that. He does it. I really like the tropical setting of this. Uh, not only because it's very visually appealing, and it is. It looks wonderful. But it's this cool juxtaposition between the darkness and awfulness of a zombie epidemic and what people would associate with light, sunny vacation. You know, it's it's like here's here's a place that you'd like to just relax and have a good time, and you associate with that, but here's a zombie epidemic. Um, and it's cool because back in 1979, a lot of the zombie stuff and a lot of horror in general was being done in, like, grimy places, dark places, and so to have this kind of juxtaposition of like it's daylight and all this stuff is happening and it's beautiful and all this stuff is happening is cool. It, it, it's really cool. I really like that aspect of it. That's one of my favorite things about this film, to be honest. Um, at what what's the point of the woman popping her top off before diving in this? Like right before we get to the zombie versus shark scene, we get the scene of the woman going into the water and she has to take her bikini top off in order to dive doesn't make sense i mean i get it like it makes sense from the perspective of making the film because nudity sells like it still does but even back then it was kind of like expected and you get a decent amount of nudity in this but it was just funny to me while i'm watching i was just like oh she's like she legitimately believes this character that she's got to take that top off to to be more like ergonomic in the water i don't know <laughs> it's weird uh yeah and i put down yeah that shark versus zombie scene is nuts and it looks dangerous i guarantee it was dangerous to shoot uh fulci uses a repetitive beeping noise if you didn't notice uh to signal when zombies are around and it is crazy annoying i had to turn the volume down on the movie every single time it happened uh he also did that with a, like a squeaking gurney in the beyond what is it with him and those really messed up noises? It's like ear piercing. Or maybe my ears are just too sensitive. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. The scene with the zombie hand on the glass when the lady's showering looks amazing. It was a really cool change in focus of that shot. You know, you're looking through the, the glass window of the woman showering, and then the hand goes up, and then it refocuses on just the hand, and you can, like, see her in the background, and it's just, like, over her. It looks awesome. It's great. And... It's, it's got what you need in that scene of just, you know, dread. You know, like, everything's going fine. I mean, the fact that they focused on her showering for so long gives you the idea that something's about to go wrong. But once the hand hits that glass, it's it's this very effective moment of, here we go. She's in, she's in big trouble. And it just looked great. Like I said, it looked amazing. It was probably not that easy to pull off either with the focusing. Although, you know. These camera, camera men and women are professionals. Uh, the splinter of wood in the eye scene is so gnarly, and it was a very, it, it was probably very, very shocking back then. It look, I think it looks good. Like keeping in context what the time period is that this film was made, I think it looks good now still. But that it looks nuts. Like when it like goes into the eye and keeps going like you don't think it's going to keep going you like see it go in and you think it's only going to be you think it's just going to be just the tip and then they're going to cut away but it just keeps going and then how it like pulls the eye out the side and everything it's like i said it's really gnarly it's gross and it works really well and this is what i was talking about earlier with I feel like Fulci goes into these films with specific ideas of like, this is a gore gag I want to do. This is a cool scene I want to shoot. I just want to make sure that's in there. Don't care about the story. But, you know, the shark scene and the eye, the wooden splinter in the eye thing, those two are two of the best parts. 
The 1932 film, just a little bit of trivia here, the 1932 film White Zombie actually introduced the idea of zombies via voodoo. So I actually have seen White Zombie. Um, if you are going to watch it, I would recommend watching it for historical purposes to kind of know where a lot of zombie films came from. Um, I mean, it didn't inspire a lot because not a lot came after it, but it is one of the, it is maybe the earliest occurrence of zombies in film. It might be, it might be the earliest, if not, it's one of the earliest, but it's worth seeing, but just keep in mind, it's 1932. If you keep that in mind, you'll be like, oh, this is a pretty solid film. If you don't, you'll be like, God, I hate this film. So just know that. Uh, the scene of the zombies feasting on the woman looks awesome. And one of the reasons it looks really, really good is not just how they had the guts. Um, the practical effects look really good. Like, the guts looked really real. The blood looks appropri appropriately red. The way her body splayed out and the, the zombies are going at the feasting is really nice. But the lighting of it is really cool. And this is kind of what I was talking about, about the awesome juxtaposition of having, like, a nice um, in-the-daylight uh, setting with this bleak, horrible thing that's happening. Um, this is where it plays extremely well. That lighting is awesome in that film, in that scene. Another one of those really inspired scenes. I like the framing of the scene where all the zombies are slowly emerging from the ground. Um, there's a bunch of shots of, of slow emergence from of zombies from the ground. At first, it seems like they're just going way too slow until they, they hit that one like longer shot where there's like, I don't know, like four zombies in the actual frame and they're just like all slowly coming up. And it looks, it just looks really cool and it gives you this feeling of just like, things slowly ratcheting up in intensity and i think it works like that and i really really like that scene for that for that reason the amount of times characters in fulci films seem to just wait to be killed is unbelievable uh, i mean just watch watch any of fulci's films at this point and you'll you'll understand that like there's so many scenes where like a zombie or something is coming at the person and they just stand there it's like they're just like okay this is where i die just waiting for it now. They could try and get away, and they just don't do it. And it happens in this film as well. That's just something that strikes me as a Fulci thing. The feeling of hopelessness at the end of this as the zombies take New York City is a very good way to end, I think. Obviously, it sets it up for a sequel. I don't know if that's where Zombie 3 goes or not, but it's interesting. I really like it, especially as you're seeing like all the, the kind of droves of zombies walking on the, um, the bridge. And just like like they're going to New York City. Or is that already in it? At any rate, you get the point. So really cool. So let me talk about some stuff after the fact. I'm not talking about the events of the film anymore, but just the film in general. This is another fun visual journey with good kills, much like a lot of Fulci films. It's very light on story, though, like I was talking about before. That's a Fulci thing. Uh, but if you disagree, put some comments down there. There's an interesting point of saying that science is no better than the native superstitions. Even though science is supposed to be smarter and indicates a level of control, there are things that can't it can't, can't solved and are better to just avoid. Yeah, it's this whole feeling of like the scientists showing up and being like, we'll take over this situation. We'll figure out what the problem is because we're the civilized colonialism culture and we will come in take control and figure out what's going on here whereas the the indigenous people there are like look um it, they're going off a of superstition as the scientists look at it and they're saying look this is just something that happens it's best to just not try to understand it but try to avoid it but the scientists are like no 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 we have to understand it to solve it instead of avoiding it and it just kind of makes the point a little bit that you know, while there is this need for knowledge and thinking we're better because we can understand it and then take care of it, you can't necessarily do that. And it's just going to get you killed in the end. So, you know, being superstitious about it was probably a better thing from the beginning because then you probably just get out. The reporter profession being added in this is the same as the scientist. Both are seeking knowledge, but neither can contain or control where that leads them. And that's why I think it's interesting where the scientist's daughter and the reporter kind of join forces because they're a bit the same in that sense. Like scientists, I mean, she's not a scientist, but she kind of represents her, her father. Scientist and reporter, 
they both have that that need for knowledge. They both are knowledge seekers and try to control the narrative and actually shape the narrative, figure out what's going on, and then solve the problem, And like I was talking about a little bit ago. But in instances like zombie epidemics, you're not going to solve it, at least not in this film. The local superstition versus foreign scientific intervention gets at, co at colonialism and the forcing of beliefs on a people who don't actually want it. You do get the idea in this film that the scientist is there and he's trying to not just solve this and get the knowledge for himself, but to kind of go to the, the local people and be like, here, I did this for you. Civilized society has shown up and saved you from yourselves. So now you're better and now you're not savages anymore and problem solved. But obviously that doesn't happen because bedlam. I've never used that term before, but I like it. Anyway, that's kind of all I have to say about Zombie, or Zombie 2, if you're naming it the Italian way. Um, so now i got to give a rating. Out of five stars with half stars in play, it's always kind of hard for me to do these Fulci films just because, um, like I said, it's light on story, but the visuals are cool and the gore is cool, so I don't know. Out of five stars, I'm going to give it a three, three. I gotta go three. The lack of story just kills me. Um, I could have gone to three. I, I was thinking about going to three and a half just because of how it looks and the, the cool thing of the setting being so awesome dichotomy-wise, but I'm gonna give it three stars. Uh, that feels appropriate to me. Anyway, let's, uh, let's talk about this film in the comments and any other Fulci stuff or any horror stuff you want to talk about. Do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe because I don't get paid to do this. I'm just, you know, spending my time and money doing these things. And it's nice to get encouragement. And people subscribing to the channel definitely keeps me going. And I want to be able to interact with more people too. Because one of the main reasons I started this channel is because I don't really have a whole lot of people in my area who I can talk to about horror stuff. So I kind of took to the internet and decided to do this channel to talk to people about horror, you know. I, I, I mean, with the videos, I'm talking at people about horror, but the comments is where I get the conversation goes. So, love the comments. Hit that subscribe. Do a like if you've either already subscribed or you want to keep encouraging me. And make sure you hit the notification bell if you are subscribed or if you're going to subscribe. That way you know every time I'm putting up a new video, I'm doing at least two a week, sometimes more, depending. So, check out all my stuff. Thanks for checking this out, though, and until next time, keep it brutal.